Hello guys, ComputerX here. Since you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you have already used the AutoMapper before or you have heard of it. So this video is going to be separated into two different parts. The first part, I'm going to show you the standard way of how we use the AutoMapper. And the second part is how to make it better, how to reduce uh, your code and how to make it more generic. And just a quick reminder, we usually use an AutoMapper to map two uh, two different objects that have the same properties so for example item model and item entity usually in real applications we do not return the entity class to the uh, view however we create a, a dto or a model and we return that model to the view and in the data access layer is where we actually use the entities so i already have my automapper library installed so I have created this console application project to show you the two ways of using the AutoMapper. I have here two different folders, one for the entities, where I have two different classes, item entity, person entity, and one for the models, where I have item model and person model. I also have created a class, a business logic layer, where I'm going to have two different functions in each. We're going to do some stuff and then map the entity to our model and then return it. So let's first take a look here. Usually what we do is we create a variable of type mapper for each uh, classes that we have. So if we have person model and person entity, we would need a person mapper for that and for the items as well. And then we would create two different mapping configuration, one for each mapper that we have. So let's create first the person map configuration. You already know this dot create map we specified here the entity and the model and i have added dot reverse map so that it works uh, vice versa from person entity to person model and so on and i have created as well another uh, map for the item and then we have initialized our two mappers here with those two uh, mapping configurations this is i guess what you're used to do uh, to doing usually in your projects and it works perfectly so let's say here we have a function that returns an item model. Okay, so here we fetch the item from the data access layer, which will return an item entity. Here I have simulated that by creating one myself. However, this should be uh, from another data source. And then now we need to automap this to from item entity to item model. So we have used the automapper as we usually do. We already have this item mapper here initialized with a mapping configuration and we specified that we're mapping from item entity not, uh, to item model and not vice versa and we have passed the source so item fetch from db which is of type item entity which will be auto map to item model and then we return that this works perfectly and i have done the same here with the person model so i fetched a person entity from a database again i simulated this by creating my own entity and then we have used the other mapper, which is the person mapper, which uses a different mapping configuration, which is this one. And I have uh, passed the person fetch from DB, which is the person entity, and it has automapped that to a person model that we are returning. And if we go ahead and try to run the application, by the way, I'm calling those functions from the main. If you take a look here, everything is working fine. This is our model. It has the same properties, the same values as the item entity here. And if we continue, as you can see, the person model also has the same uh, values as the person entity here. You're going to tell me, okay, what's the problem then? Well, let's say we had 50 different tables or even 10 or 20 different tables so 20 different classes and we need to map these classes from uh, entities to the to or to model then we would need 50 different configurations so here for example we only have person and item so we need the two different configurations but what if we had 50 different classes that we need to map we, we would need to add a, a, a mapper configuration for each and create its own map so it's better if we can make it more generic and that's what we're going to do. So let's see how we can make this mapper 
more generic and that way we would not need to write much code so let's go ahead and create a new folder I'm gonna call it utilities and let's add a new class a new item I'm gonna call this class my auto mapper I'm gonna make it public and static and then let's make it generic so we have t source and t destination now let's think about this for a moment usually what do we do we create okay we create a variable of type person uh, of, of type mapper for each uh, class that we want to map we then create a mapper configuration for each mapper that we need and if we take a look at those two mapper configurations the only variable or the only difference between those two is the types used so here we're using person entity to person model and here item entity to item model so we need to find a way to only write one mapper configuration create one mapper only and this mapper should work on any type of object that we can specify so as I told you previously if we have here 50 different classes that we need to map we would need 50 different mappers and 50 different mapper configurations so now since we have created a generic static class we can use t source and t destination as types here so let's go ahead and create one mapper mapper with its own mapper configuration which is going to be a uh, mapper let's call it my mapper equal new this is mapper and we need to add the namespace so we're using the actual library into our own class and here let's create a new mapper configuration so new mapper configuration and let's take a look again here we can take all of this let's copy that paste it here and then here we need source and destination instead of a specific type this way this mapper and this mapper configuration works on any type of objects now we still need to create the functions so if we take a look again here we can see that we usually use the mapper name then dot map and we specify the types then we pass in the source that we need to map from so here what we're going to do okay we're going to create two different classes two different functions my bad so public i'm going to create them as static since this is a static class and it's going to return the destination object so the model or the entity depends what we're trying to do so t destination and then i'm gonna call it map and then here we need to pass in the source of type t source which is going to be specified now here what we need to do is return we're going to use this mapper that we just created so my mapper dot map by the way i have a curly braces added here by mistake so here my mapper dot remember this is from the class from the library that we have added previously the auto mapper library so we can actually call the function that are in that library like map for example and then here we need to specify the d t destination just as they said so t destination and we need to pass in the source which is here so source all right now let's test this out I'm gonna come here again in our BLL I'm gonna delete all of this code we don't need the constructor we don't need those configurations and I'm also gonna delete those two mappers here so here instead of this we don't have this mapper anymore we have deleted this we need to use the auto mapper that we have created it is a static class and the functions are static obviously because it's a static class so we need to use the class name to access them to call them so here my auto mapper dot we need to add the namespace let's do that and then dot map but first we need to specify uh, the uh, generic types because it's a generic class so here item model we are going to transform from item entity to item model 
and then what we, do we need to map we need to map the uh, this one this item entity now let's I'm gonna comment this out for now okay we also need to comment this out okay, let's add this let's run this again if you take a look now as you can see our own mapper is working so we have used our generic class I'm gonna stop this and let's do uh, the same for, for this function here again we don't have the person mapper anymore we need to use our own mapper so my auto mapper and then we need to specify those here for the class and then we have called dot map okay, we need to add this okay as you can see now it's working let's try to run it item model all the values have been auto mapped continue person model uh, we need to we need to uncomment this let's run this again okay item model is working continue person model it's also working so if we take a look at this class we no longer have two different configurations we no longer have two different mappers now we are using a static class that we have created here that only has one configuration so we don't have to create uh, different configurations each time for a different object and we have created our own map function which we'll call the actual uh, library map function for the mapper now let's say we have a list let's go ahead and create a function that we can use to map lists so list of models to list of entities and vice versa so public static this time we're going to return a list of type t destination so list t destination and i'm gonna call the function map list of course it's not going to take a single source it's going to take a list of type t source and then here let's create a variable and initialize it as a list of type t destination since that's what we're going to return and now now we if you take a look we have a list of sources that we need to loop through and map each item of that list to type t destination and add it to this list and then return it so let's go ahead and do that source dot for each let's open that and use the arrow function x being the current item and then list dot add and here we need to add map x so here we are mapping x and we're adding the uh, mapped version of it in this list so let's go ahead and close this and now return the list let's go ahead and test our map list function so here for example let's return a list of item models and let's suppose that here we have two different items that we have fetched from the database so our item fetched item to fetch from database and then let's say I don't know uh, this is of this should have been of type double but just it's just an example now so it doesn't matter that much and then let's add those two item entities into a list so let's go ahead and say list of item entity let's say list equal new list of item entity and then let's add those two items So now here what we have is a list of item entity but however we need to return to the view a list of item model instead 
So here, instead of using myautomapper.map, we, we're going to use that map list, and we need to pass in the list, which is this one. Of course, now I'm not using correct names, but just for the example, and here it needs to be a list of item model. So let's do that. And now we can return our list. Now let's go ahead and run this. And if we take a look at our item model list, this should have been item model list to be more meaningful. However, if you take a look at it, we have two different items here, two different item model with the same values as the uh, item entity list here. So this way we have created our own automapper class that of course uses the mapper from the automapper package that we have installed. However, here we have used generic types for the mapper configuration so that we don't have to uh, create different mapping configuration just like we did at first where we had a map a mapper for the person and a mapper for the item and two different uh, mapping configurations. Now the only downside I see so far for this way is let's say we have 50 different tables however not all of those tables have the same mapping configuration one of them has a few extra options we would not be able to do it directly like this we would need to modify this class and use other stuff but this is for most common situations I believe if you found this video helpful please leave a like and give me uh, some feedback in the comments give me some ideas of other videos that you might want to uh, watch maybe some angular tutorial or some full stack applications uh, subscribe if you're new and i'll see you next time